Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of 247 DIY. In the third episode in this mini series of giving my old Craftsman riding tractor here a little bit of TLC in preparation to make it a dedicated snow blowing tractor for the winter time. In the last video, we went ahead and got new tires and wheels installed in the front end, as well as did a bushing to bearing upgrade on that. Today, we're going to be going ahead and tackling the sloppy steering here, which is relatively common on a lot of these tractors as they get older. And it's all due to this one little part here. So stick around, we'll go ahead and replace it. So just to illustrate the problem a little bit here, you can see that when I turn the wheel, you get this much play in the front end, but you can see the wheels there. They're not even starting to turn. And I'm just turning it to the limits of where you would actually start to get some travel in the front tires. But you get all this play right here. And let me show you what the problem actually is. So it's a little hard to get enough light back in there. We'll get a better look at this once we do the disassembly to get to this part. But you can see the two gears, the one larger half moon shaped gear there, and then the small gear on the end of the gear shaft. You can see that when I turn the wheel, that gear on the end of the gear shaft goes into that plastic part that's connected next to the other gear. And all I'm doing right here is that same slop that I was showing you in the steering wheel. And what happens is where that shaft slots into that plastic piece there, it just starts to get worn out and that what is normally a very tight tolerance hole in there gets larger over time and you just get all this slop in there. So that's what we're going to be going ahead and replacing today. There is a little bit of work involved in this unfortunately, but let's just go ahead and get into it. So the first thing we're going to do is go ahead and pull out the fuel tank. Now you can go ahead and like pinch the line off underneath, disconnect this, get it out if you don't want to drain the tank. I don't have much gas in there. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to disconnect the fuel line here before the fuel filter and grab a container, let the gas drain out into there, then we can go ahead and remove the tank. All right, so now that the majority of the fuel uh, is out of there, um, there's still gonna be a little bit in the bottom of the tank, and while we're moving this around to take it out of the tractor itself, we don't wanna spill gas everywhere. So all I've done, and it's a pretty handy trick for these types of situations, I just took a bolt and wrapped the threads in some electrical tape, and we can plug the end of the line and keep things nice and clean. Now we're gonna have to remove this spring clamp and then we can thread the fuel hose back through the grommet here in the body. Then using a 10 millimeter socket, we can go ahead and remove these two 10 millimeter bolts um, that hold this shroud on top because that does bolt down over top of your fuel tank. Take that shroud off and set that aside. And then our fuel tank. And then right down in there is that gear assembly that we were just looking at a minute ago. And now at this point, uh, we're gonna go ahead and get it on the lawnmower lift uh, because we are gonna need access underneath the lawnmower in just a minute. And before we go ahead and go underneath the mower, right there on the left hand side, if you are facing the front of the mower of this assembly, there's a 14 millimeter bolt that needs to come undone. Again, my tools out here in the shop are primarily metric. Um, so if you don't have metric, you're just gonna have to use the equivalent standard size wrench for that, but 14 millimeters, what's gonna work for me? You're gonna to wanna to be a little bit cautious in this area. Um, I didn't disconnect the battery for this and you do have your positive terminal right here. So when you're swinging your wrench or your ratchet, uh, just don't come in contact with that positive battery terminal right there. 
and there is a washer on there so be sure to retain the washer so what that's going to do is it's going to unbolt it from this bracket and everything's going to be loose and then that does connect to this bracket here now you could do this job if that bracket could come all the way over but that bracket can't come all the way over so if you can see here there's two self-threading bolts sticking up there's actually four on this bracket what we need to actually do is fully unbolt this bracket from the frame here and we'll do that from the underside all right and so underneath the tractor here we've got our four bolts one two three and four all right there they are also 14 millimeter bolts and we'll see if my smaller impact can take these out if not we might have to grab the bigger one Now we can go back up to the top side of the mower. So now with that unbolted. All right, so one thing I forgot is there is an E-clip that I forgot to remove. Uh, basically where my thumbs are right there, there's an E-clip on that shaft. Um, it makes life a whole lot easier if you remove that. Uh, somehow I did end up getting it to come out of there with the E-clip um, still installed. I did end up taking it off later. Uh, just remember to reinstall that E-clip when you're all done. Uh, make sure that shaft stays in place exactly where it's meant to be. With a little bit of effort and persuasion, we can go ahead and separate all the components here. So I actually realized I made a little bit of a mistake. It's not the end of the world, we can fix it. Um, but if you're doing this at home, what you wanna do is if you can see if there's enough light, this main gear here sits on splines and then this gear sits in here at a certain position. So you just wanna take a paint pen or a marker, mark where this goes on the splines and mark where these gears uh, made up to these gears so you can put it all back in together so that your steering wheel and everything's all nice and lined up when you put it back together Don't worry though. We can sort that out once we've got the part replaced So now we can go ahead you can lift the steering wheel right up to give yourself some clearance and then up inside the end of this part we're going to be replacing here is a 10 millimeter bolt And there's a washer that goes between this part and the shaft, so make sure you hold on to that. All right, so here's a comparison of the two parts. The old one here, um, you can pretty clearly see the difference, what's going on. This is the old one, this is the new one. And you can see how oblong this hole has become over time versus the new part, which is perfectly round. It's a little harder to see with the naked eye, but it has also started to do it a little bit on where the shaft rides through here on this one so we'll go ahead and get the new part in and we'll see how much of a difference this makes all right so we're going to go ahead and throw the new part back in there remember the side here with the two flats is going to go away from where that half moon or quarter moon uh, gear set was so basically it's going to be facing that way and even though i used a 10 millimeter to take it off i am going to switch to a 3 8 to put it back on 10 millimeters a little loose and I want to make sure this goes back on nice and tight, so I don't want to risk rounding that off. So we're going to switch up to the 3 8s here. So now what I'm going to have to do is a little bit of trial and error. Um, I'm basically just going to have to kind of dry fit a lot of these components, actuate the steering, um, and then make sure I have even steering from side to side with the steering wheel centered. Um, I'll probably cut away from that um, and then come back once I have it sorted out. I've taken that gear set off there. I wanna add some grease to a lot of these components because I have a feeling it's gonna be a lot of on and off until I find that sweet spot where it's perfectly centered. So like I said, we're gonna throw some grease on there, get this kind of dry fitted, try the steering, 
probably have to take it apart and do that a few times before we get it perfectly centered again. So yeah, I uh, just decided to jump ahead instead of making you guys watch uh, what was honestly a little bit of a nightmare. I actually either got lucky or it's not as an, an exact of a science getting those lined up as I thought. First try, um, it works fine, lock to lock. I just kind of try to visualize and remember the way that it was before. Um, and it all went back together. You can see I had a little bit of grease there, but if we go ahead and test the wheel, there's almost no slop in that steering wheel at all. But one thing that I noticed is the steering wheel is not straight, which is okay because it moves us on to the next thing we're gonna replace. So let's go ahead and get the steering wheel off. And so up here on the steering wheel, there's just this plastic cover here. You just pop that off of the flathead screwdriver. We've got another 14 millimeter bolt right here. There's a lock washer on there, and then a big washer on top. Then we can take our wheel off. And just pop the shroud off. And you can see all the, wheel, the wobble right here in the steering shaft. And this is a replaceable bushing right here, so we'll go ahead and replace that. So we can go ahead and take this little plastic wheel adapter right off of there. And then we need to get this outer sleeve off. And it's just a 9 16th. All right, so that can uh, get a little tricky to get that off. Uh, the way that bolt goes through there and then squeezes down on this, it kind of leaves some burrs on the inside of the metal there and it doesn't really want to come off. So um, I just got a pair of vice grips on here and then up underneath where your steering column comes down, um, I got some grips on there and then I was able to just kind of spin it and then you can work it up and get it off the shaft here. So then we can go ahead and remove the worn out steering column bushing here and it's held in with two 5 16 bolts. And that'll just slide right up off the shaft. And just like the steering um, linkage bushing, whatever you want to call it, that we replaced down in there, um, these are the same thing, it's plastic, and just after years and years of use, it just starts to wear that plastic out there. And we've got the new bushing ready to go in right here. The one I ordered, I'll link it down below, it comes with new bolts as well. We'll just take a little bit of grease. We'll just grease the shaft here, especially down where the bushing sits. And then up along there, just so assembly's a little bit easier. We'll take them, we'll just add a little bit to the inside of the bushing. All right, sorry to cut away there. Um, for whatever reason, when the bolts came out of there, the threads got really messed up. Um, I actually had to take a tap and chase those threads, and then on this side, I basically had to cut all new threads. Um, but it is back in there. Everything's nice and tight. We can go ahead and start to reassemble and get the wheel back on there. And that's way better now. There's barely any moving in there. And one last thing that I'm gonna do that I wasn't expecting to have to do 
is if you put the wheel on there and you throw your washer back on and your bolt back on there, you can see that there's this bit of rock that happens in the steering wheel and there's actually play between the steering wheel um, and the washer that's meant to kind of hold that down solid. So what I did was I had two of these large fender washers laying around. I enlarged the hole and then I was able to put it down on a large socket with a nut on the top. And I don't know if you'll be able to see it on the camera, but they're kind of elongated. Like this side is bowed out more than this side. And that's gonna make it kind of act like a little bit of a spring. And it's gonna take up that gap. So we're just gonna throw that back on there with the washer, the lock washer. And it's not perfect, but it's a lot better than it was. And really the only slob that's left in there right now is that extension piece rocking back and forth on the shaft. So we're just gonna go ahead and see how tight we can get this. There we go. And you can see how solid and tight that is now. And I'm actually really impressed with just how tight that's made the steering now. There's almost no slop in there whatsoever. Huge, huge improvement over how it was before. So let's go ahead, we'll get the fuel tank and the shroud back on the top of the engine. Um, we'll get those parts back in and then I just have a couple of bushings in the front end suspension. Um, as long as we're here, that should tighten the last little bit up um, and then we'll wrap this video up. So now we're back up front in the front end steering again. Um, we've got two different sets um, of bushings that we're going to replace. The first are the bushings on the end of the drag link here. So you've got this side that comes over and then it connects up to the other side so that when you turn your steering wheel, which turns this rod, that drag link is what actuates your steering. And there's two plastic bushings, one on this side and one on the other side that are in there. So you just have a pinch style cotter pin here Sometimes you can get these with your fingers, sometimes not, but you just need to squeeze the ends shut. And you can pull it through the other side. And there's a little washer on the bottom, so make sure you don't lose that. And then you can pull your drag link up out of there. And then there is another little plastic bushing that just wears out over time. We've got the new one right here. Just pop that in there. Pop your drag link back on. Throw your washer back on. Get your pin back through that hole. Sometimes you gotta clamp it down, slide it through. And then you can just take a pair of pliers separate the ends of that pin and that's what holds it in place. And then we've got two bushings, two uh, spindle bushings inside of the arm here. All we need to do is come up here and push out the E-clip. Your whole spindle will fall right down out. Got a washer up here, make sure you retain that. And then you'll see you've got this thin plastic bushing right here. There's one on the bottom that stayed on the spindle there. It has a washer that goes on top of that, so make sure you hang on to that washer. 
but we're gonna go ahead and replace these. And I've order, already ordered the new ones and I can already tell there's gonna be a big difference. These are almost like paper thin at this point. So we'll get some new bushings in there. And there is a Zerk fitting uh, right here on the front to fill this uh, chamber where your spindle sits with grease. Unfortunately, my grease gun died the other day, so I'm just gonna go ahead and lube up as much as I can by hand. Um, and then when next time I get to the store, I'll get a new grease gun and we'll really fill these up nicely. But for now, I'm just gonna have to grease them up by hand. Not a big deal. We've got our new bushings right here. Get those greased up. And these can be a little bit tricky when reassembling, so I found the easiest way to do it. Don't forget your washer on there. Is you have to, sorry about that. Uh, these bushings must have been like a uh, universal style bushing or something. There was like a weird tab on there that wasn't letting the washer sit all the way flat, but I went ahead and cut that washer off or that tab off, we'll slide our washer on, we'll slide our bushing up in there. And instead of, because what I've done in the past and it doesn't work is if you slide that spindle up in there first, you can't get this bushing on there. So we'll get this bushing in there first, and then we can slide our spindle up in. And with those new bushings on there, it is gonna be a little bit of a struggle, but it's kind of a good thing. Um, the reason why the old ones came out so easy is because they were so thin and worn out. Throw our washer back on with our E-clip on there. Make sure everything moves nicely, and it does. Now there is almost no play in that front end. This is still a 12 year old mower, so you're never really gonna get rid of all of the play everywhere. Not to mention it's just a garden tractor in the first place, so it's not like this was built with super high tolerances anyway, but very happy with how that feels now. We'll go ahead and all that's left to do is repeat that on the other side. So that's gonna do it for this one, guys. I'm actually really happy with how tight we were able to get this steering on here. Um, I've been mowing with this, you know, before I went ahead and replaced this this year for four or five years and the steering's always been terribly sloppy. This is better than even when I bought it. I did buy it used, but this is better than even when I first started using it. So super happy with what we were able to accomplish here in this one. Um, if you like the video, be sure to hit that like button. Feel free to leave a comment below and considering that subscribe button so you don't miss the next episode where we go ahead and finally dig into getting this snowblower mounted to the front end. So stick around for that one.